What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews, I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2025 Ram Charger. Let's get right into it. The Ram Charger is a first of its kind setup, and I have to say, I think the idea of it is very cool. On the other hand, it seems excessive, but maybe it's the best thing since sliced bread, we'll find out soon, but for now, let's get into exactly what it is while we look at all the pictures released by Ram. I'm going to quote Ram off the bat so you know exactly how they describe the setup in a few words. A liquid-cooled 92 kilowatt hour battery pack paired with a 130 kilowatt generator. The Pentastar 3.6 liter engine generates mechanical power, which can, is converted to electrical power by the onboard generator for maximum efficiency. The generator can also increase the power to the motor and gearbox when serious power is needed. With charging, Ram says there's an easy-to-use quick-release mount featuring a lockable, weatherproof enclosure. The truck comes equipped to handle three different levels of charging. It is compatible with level one, an available level two charger at 240 volts, and a level three charger at 400 volts. Add up to 50 miles of all electric charge in just 10 minutes with 400 volt DC fast charging at up to 145 kilowatts. In one pedal driving mode, when easing off the accelerator, the regenerative braking system kicks in as the truck gradually slows down and captured kinetic energy recharge recharges the battery. And in terms of some onboard power, there's up to 4.8 kilowatts in the trunk bed and an available power panel up to 7.2 kilowatts. So a lot of numbers just got thrown at you there, but definitely kind of a unique setup here. A lot of different ways to get power and use power on board. Switching over to the design, this is a full redesign. The front end resembles the Ram we're used to, but the rear is certainly a bit different. The angle taillights look great, and in my opinion, as well as the Ram badge, which looks more like it was designed by Kia's new badge guy. These new light fixtures will have bright LEDs to illuminate the road ahead. I'm digging the new daytime running lights that enter the grill area. And as I mentioned, the taillights are a welcome sight from the traditional truck taillights that are generally very basic. There's an available power tailgate for ease of use with the available Ram box cargo management system. You can keep your cargo organized and secure in lockable and weatherproof storage bins, so that's a cool touch. Another important note back to performance uh, is that Ram says this will be all wheel drive. So not only will you be getting that superior traction, you will also you know, be able to get that full power kind of instantly with all that extra grip, all the power going to the front and the rear. Electric drive modes are going to include Electric Plus, eSave, and Eco, and each of those will have a different effect on the engine and what it's doing. It will be interesting to see what trims make the docket for this. Word on the street is many of the familiar favorites will be back, including the Tradesman, Bighorn, Limited, and the Tungsten looking dressed to impress. Price points are also anticipated to sit between 60 and 80,000, but I'm skeptical that 80K will be the top of the range. As you can see here at the end of these exterior shots are the initial performance numbers being released and make sure to read that these are targeted numbers and subject to change and potentially not on all the trims. Horsepower is said to be 663, torque at 615 with a 0 to 60 time of 4.4 seconds. As I mentioned, all wheel drive will aid in that. Range is going to be 690 miles with the gas engine involved but you can manage 145 on only electric power. Payload maxes out at 6,225 pounds, and towing is a fantastic 14,000 pounds. No doubt impressive numbers here. And finally, Ram says to expect this available in 2025, but maybe there's still some hope for the end of this year, 2024. Let's look inside now. Although there's not overly much released at this point about the interior, I'll tell you everything I was able to find. And certainly off the bat, you can tell this thing will be packing in some serious luxury with a phenomenal design as well. The standard infotainment screen is going to be 12 inches, and there's an available 14 and a half inch, and as you can see, vertically oriented touchscreen. And this thing looks ginormous. Something about the vertically oriented screens, they just look huge anyway. Plus, this thing is 14 and a half inches. That's great to see, and great to see that at least a base trim will still have a 12 inch setup. You connect five system software, which is a great system, easy to use. 
The driver's information cluster display will be 12.3 inches. That's great to see as well. And if that's not enough screen for you, there's an available 10.25 inch passenger interactive display. So your front passengers can fully you know, immerse themselves in the functions of this truck, uh, more like listening to music. There's an available 3D heads up display, available dual wireless charging pads, the tungsten trim, which is going to be that top of the line, will have premium leather, 24-way power front seats with heat, ventilation, and memory. There's going to be a world-class Kilch Reference Premier audio system, real wood and carbon fiber accents, bright metal speakers, and noise-canceling features throughout the cabin. There will also be available massaging seats. Trims and materials look to be high-end, or at least faux high-end, with nice designs. Lots of great standard driver's assist, safety and technology features seem to be there, and I'm sure it's a classic setup of you'll get more the higher you option. Overall, I think and hope Ram will knock it out of the park with all these interiors and their standard features once it's official, because this thing is sure to be expensive and even the base trims will be deserving of many amenities. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a you know, a truck here in 2025, you don't want an EV, you don't want fully gas, maybe you don't even want a hybrid, this is somewhere in the middle of all of that. Um, a generator, you know, adding charge to an electric motor, making range through the roof, I mean, this blows away the range of other competitors that are EVs. Um, you know, this is really the competition you'd have to compare it to. The big players right now, obviously, Ford Lightning, Rivian R1T, Tesla Cybertruck, obviously out now, uh, but the Silverado EV, there's the GMC Hummer EV, there's definitely other EV trucks uh, that are out there that can go against this, the Sierra EV uh, on the horizon as well. Um, definitely those would be the main competition of this, even though this isn't a full EV, this is a plug-in hybrid with a generator on board. Again, an engine that charges the motors doesn't actually power the wheels so definitely a unique setup like i said at the beginning of the video super cool sounding idea seems a little excessive uh, you know a lot going on to have an engine and all those batteries but uh, the results of that being a stellar high range um, and really something unique uh, could be something that's pretty cool and pretty popular i just hope prices aren't so out of control that so few people can actually get their hands on these uh, if they want one uh, but if that's think your thing and you want one of these and go for it it could be a pretty sweet vehicle for years to come. Hope this video laid things out the way for you guys. Thank you for watching this Ben's Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have a day for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, have that option. Check that out and join if you'd like and I'll catch you on the next Ben's Car Review.